The pull-up three. Got it! This is the kind of start Chicago was looking for. Great pass to Rodman from Jordan. Oh, what a beautiful pass. Rolling to victory in game one, the Bulls seemed ready to assert their dominance. But in game two, their attack would grind to a halt, and Charlotte would take full advantage. Charlotte all over the Bulls. They're out hustling them early. The Hornets' defense has really stiffened. Here is a three-on-two break. Wesley, no look to Glenn Rice, who lays it in. Chicago appears to be out of rhythm on their offense. The Bulls look way out of sync right now. For almost four quarters, the Bulls had struggled to grab control of the game. But in the final minutes, it would slip away. And adding insult to injury, a former teammate would seal their fate. Armstrong works off a D-Bot screen to the right wing, pull up, pop it. Good! B.J. gets the Hornets a five-point lead! And then glares at the Bulls' bench. In a stunning finish, the Bulls had lost the game. And with it, the home court advantage. And they also had to endure the sight of Armstrong and his jubilant teammates celebrating at their expense. I don't know. We've got to pick up the intensity. We're not, uh, we don't seem to have a lot of fire out there. Maybe this will wake us up. When someone comes in front of your bench, starts screaming in front of your bench on your home court, I mean, it just it motivates you. What it did is that it really gave us a focus to say that uh, we're going to go out and just really kick their butt now. As the series moved to Charlotte, the Bulls would prove that the Hornets' celebration was far too premature. Tip to the baseline with a drive, and a left corner to pass. Wrong. Curl up the hit for Pippen, and Pippen. Are you kidding? Mid air. Are you kidding me? Oh, oh, oh. Gives it back to Jordan. Jordan plus Steve out of the baseline for the layup. Oh, see you later, bloody. You see the activity level of Chicago really picking up now. They're getting more frenetic on defense. They're forcing some turnovers. Charlotte really has lost their composure and not been able to score. Chicago's taking advantage of it. Overwhelming the Hornets in games three and four, the Bulls emphatically answered their wake-up call. This team likes a challenge. If you're going to let us go out and go through the motions and beat you, we will. But if you challenge us, we're going to move up our level of play to the next level, and that's what we did. And they weren't about to let up as the Bulls would seize game five back in Chicago. Charlotte mentally has conceded to the Chicago Bulls. In moving on to the Eastern Conference Finals, the Bulls had left the Hornets with a hard-earned lesson. I think BJ kind of forgot you know, about us, you know, what drives us. We utilized that energy that he used at the end of game two to our advantage, you know, and, and we're good at that. So, uh, you know, he woke us up. It's my privilege this evening, quite simply, to present Michael Jordan with his fifth NBA Most Valuable Player trophy. While Jordan received the accolades prior to the Eastern Conference Finals against the Indiana Pacers, it was Michael's sidekick, Scotty Pippen, who would set the tone as the series began. I think we really surprised them in putting Scotty on Mark Jackson. By hounding the every move of Indiana point guard Mark Jackson, Pippen applied a stranglehold to the Pacers' attack. That was my job, was to go out and try to take Mark Jackson out of the game. Scotty Pippen is making life miserable right now for Mark Jackson. You try to cut the head off the snake to, to kill it. Pippen comes up with a loose ball as Jackson lost it. He couldn't deliver the, the ball in the split second timing that guys were open. We forced teams into bad shots or turnovers and then we're running the other way. While Pippen was spearheading the Bulls' stifling defense in games one and two, Michael Jordan was taking care of the offense. Oh, Jordan with the slammer jammer! With Jordan at his spectacular best, Chicago captured the first two games and took a firm grip on the series. Jordan to the baseline, falling, firing, scores! Oh, what a shot by Michael Jordan! And that may be the explanation point. This series is far from over. Um, now we're going back home and hopefully take care of business there. Arriving in Indianapolis for games three and four, Chicago found not only a frenzied crowd awaiting them, 
but also a rejuvenated Pacer team. Jackson pushes it back the other way. Inside Davis, it's all alone. They gave us trouble. They always had guys stepping up and doing a job for them. Jalen for three. Oh, baby! With the Bulls now making uncharacteristic mistakes, the change in venues had brought a dramatic change in momentum. Unleashing their offense, the Pacers came storming back into the series. It's Reggie! Miller and the Pacers took game three. And the Bulls' grasp on the series continued to slip away in game four. From our standpoint, we felt like that we sort of gave those games away. Pippen at the free throw line. I felt as though we, we really didn't do ourselves justice, didn't take care of business. We really, I think we let ourselves down. Trailing by one in the